Hi, right, today's job is tiling a bathroom. And we're going to convert it into this. We're going to be covering the sort of tools you'll need and the tiling techniques for tiling around a bathroom, around the toilet, shower, and specifically covering the installation of a recessed mirror, the tiling around a recessed bath, and the techniques for making uh, tiled shelves and patterned tile strips, as you can see here. Uh, preparation is the key, like most jobs. So I spent quite a bit of time in preparing for this um, uh, tiling job by actually drawing out some very rough uh, plans. So I needed one sheet of paper, made some measurements of all the different walls and looked at the size of the tile and hopefully you can see here I've had a uh, well I made a very sketchy plan of how each surface is going to be covered in the tiles and that uh, allows you to do two things first of all work out how many tiles you need to order or buy and secondly to plan the arrangement of the tiles so that you don't have any awkward edges and what I mean by awkward edges is, for instance, we have a look over here. And I wouldn't normally have a whole tile coming up to a vertical edge for the reason that the vertical edge might not be completely vertical. In this actual particular case, it was vertical enough. So I did use the whole tile to come to the edge. But even here, even though the first part of it is perfectly vertical, see at the top of the woodwork starts to bend off. That gets quite noticeable where you've got the edge of the tile biting up against it. With white tiles it's probably not quite so bad. If you had a coloured tiles, coloured tile, it would certainly start to show up. So one of the useful uh, lessons and tips is where you've got an edge, really, you really want to have that um, uh, butting so that a half tile comes up against the wall so you can actually cut the tile to perfectly fit to the right dimension and the right uh, width to butt up against the wall. So if you have got the wall going um, off from the vertical, either bending in or bending out, you just cut the tile to match. Uh, so I don't normally use whole tiles, even though I've done so here, but it uh, really demonstrates the, uh, the principle. Same in the corners as well. Um, ideally you want to have like whole tiles in the middle and then when it gets to the edge, either side have half tiles or quarter tiles or three quarter tiles something that's a fair distance away from the edge of the tile certainly what you don't want to do is have this joining between two tiles right on the edge here because it would be very very noticeable if all of a sudden this gap is either widening or narrowing so that's the first lesson um, second thing to consider is what tools you would need and uh, there's two very useful tools that I've found over the years one is a reasonable size uh, tile cutter, something like this, uh, where you can place your tile within the cutter. It has a very sharp cutting wheel on it. You line up where your cut mark is going to be, slice it across, put it in the pinches and basically break uh, a straight line across the tile. We'll do that in a minute. It's a very quick way of cutting tiles to length. The other very useful tool, which I um, probably picked up after about 10 years of doing tiling and had probably for the last 10 years, which is uh, proved to be very, very useful, is a wet uh, cutting disc. So there's a diamond cutting disc, but uh, underneath here is uh, a water bed and you want to add just the right amount of water into this bed so the water will come up all around here. It's been dried off at the moment. Don't add too much water so water splashes off everywhere use the guard to uh, control the spread of water and again, I don't know if I've got a tile, I can try it on yes, here we go. so it's going to get very noisy so I want to set headphones to protect your ears maybe I'll just put those on, excuse me and once you've marked where your cutting position is going to be Very easy to cut, minimal amount of water that's spread around the area. If you have too much water flying off everywhere, then tip a bit of water out of it. 
if your cutting disc is dry then you need to add more water and uh, other useful things to have some tissues kitchen mold or in this case toilet paper to wipe off your surfaces to limit the amount of water and muck getting everywhere those are two useful tools there's uh, several other ones I've tried over the years which is uh, diamond or carborundum cutting discs for electric jigsaws um, various hand scoring tools but nowadays I just use these two and uh, with this particular one you can cut all sorts of shapes like we have up here so for instance where we're going around a piece of awkward corner section um, it's dead easy doing it with the uh, wet cutting wheel quite often in a bathroom you'll have uh, pipes that you want to cover up some people leave the pipes all exposed I personally prefer to cover them all up so underneath here is the uh, toilet uh, waste soil pipe that I prefer to cover up to uh, give a nice clean seal around the uh, toilet stops you getting cobwebs and all sorts of insects all around the gaps that you can't really get to dust and so on simplest way I've found is to use a piece of window board wood um, which you can uh, cut for both the vertical and the horizontal um, use some old off cuts of wood to screw onto the wall at the right height so this this wood can rest on those um, off cuts and similarly behind this piece of uh, vertical wood use some off cuts of pieces of wood screwed into the floor to stop that being uh, pushed um, horizontally uh, away from you. Uh, as you as might happen if you go around hoovering or kicks it with your foot or whatever it needs some needs to have some sort of structural strength to it. Uh, for sealing around the edges nowadays I like to use the polymer sealant rather than silicon sealant because it's uh, much more uh, tacky uh, long-lasting adhesive but you probably could use silicon sealant as well. A particular attention needs to be paid to the join between the shower base and the walls so here I've used um, some shower uh, connecting pieces which are uh, two-piece connectors that allow you to have multiple seals between the water and the base of the shower because uh, I've seen a lot of applications where um, the shower base has been poorly fitted, poorly secured, silicon sealing gap has opened up between the shower and the wall and you get all sorts of leaks coming into the room below so take a lot of time to make sure you're well sealed again I prefer polymer sealant rather than silicon so it's much longer lasting um, the plumbing you'll need to sort out before you start tiling obviously um, here I've changed a uh, a previous installation of a thermostatic shower to a more modern design. This whole system with the rainfall shower, hand shower, diverter valve, flow rate, thermostatic temperature settings, thermostatic shower base shower units in here. It was only £70 from a company on the internet. Quite a good value. Uh, so this is a stud wall. It's cut out a section to get to the plumbing. Uh, refill that just with a bit of ply that's stuck over the top and again polymer sealant to seal it all off I could have plastered over it with a bonding coat but would have needed to wait quite a few days and weeks for that bonding to, coat to go off so I've just uh, sealed the whole lot with the polymer uh, adhesive sealant as well um, polymer sealant is quite nice because it um, uh, can be stuck to with the uh, tile adhesive whereas uh, a silicon sealant you wouldn't be able to uh, stick to so if you're going to do uh, any quick fixes and quick uh, sealing of uh, panels and plumbing look out for polymer sealant, sell it on eBay. So here we've got a problem of um, how to put the tile around the pipes. So what I'm going to do is drain down the water system, disconnect these pipes and drill holes through the tile. We'll come to that in a minute. Uh, I prefer to buy the ready mix tile adhesive and grout all in one, something like this, Unibond. Uh, it's just a lot easier to work with, doesn't go off particularly quickly, lasts a reasonable amount of time, um, but sets uh, on the wall uh, quite quickly um, once you put the tile in place. You can put the adhesive onto the tile or you can put the adhesive onto the wall first. As long as the wall's sealed, um, which in this case I, I have uh, sealed the walls, you can see there bare plaster is a little bit shiny if you look up there with the light shining the reason it's shiny is it's been sealed 
with a watered down PVA solution so it's no longer dusty when you put the adhesive on it uh, it doesn't suck all of the moisture out of the adhesive because the PVA forms a water barrier so that enables you to either put the adhesive onto the wall first or you could put the adhesive onto the tile first and um, the adhesive is still um, somewhat tacky and flexible when the two surfaces come together. Um, I've used both in this, both ways of doing it in this application. Um, on some parts I've um, put adhesive onto the wall and on quite a lot of parts I've put the adhesive onto the tile first. And there's advantages uh, to both if you're doing a large area, putting the adhesive on quickly and you could probably do it quicker by putting the adhesive on the wall and putting tiles on very very quickly. Um, but where you need to take a bit of time cutting the tiles, thinking about the planning of it, um, it's actually a lot easier to then put the adhesive on the tile first because it means you can stop any point and you don't have adhesive left over around the edges of the tiles because all the adhesive has been placed on the tile rather than the wall. I'd always recommend using tile spaces. I know a lot of people don't use tile spaces, which I think is a big mistake. Uh, the real useful idea of a spacer is that it gives a very consistent gap between the tiles, so you get a very square look to them. I prefer just to put it in just lightly like this one here. Um, that enables you to then, once it's dry, pick it out like so and then you can get a good filling of the grout later. Probably a good idea to maybe tile only up to about three or four um, tiles high uh, to start with. Leave it a little while for the glue to set before going too high because there's a huge amount of weight on there and it might start pushing out some of the uh, tile spaces and squashing your gaps and what you don't want is uh, to have one of these gaps uh, squashed when you're not looking which will ruin the pattern. When you come to something vertical, it's good to have um, a half tile as we have here. So, well, it's actually a quarter tile, and roughly a half tile up to that uh, uh, vertical uh, shower enclosure unit. And uh, one of the tips for measuring the width of the tile is, which I'll show you here, basically this tile is going to go here. So we could measure it with a tape measure, uh, measure across that way, but um, that tile is going to roughly go into that position there. An easy way of doing it is just to flip it over, flat it up against it, and then we can very easily mark how big we want that tile, top and at the bottom. May not necessarily be a perfectly uh, square or 90 degree angle here because this might not be vertical. So measuring both edges enables you to take that into account. And all I'm going to do now is line that up in our tile cutter. So line up one edge, that line to our mark, and we check the other edge. See it's a fraction off compared to a perfect 90 degree angle. So we line up the other edge, start off pushing down on the lever so our cutting wheel cuts nicely into the tile. One movement is normally enough. It's quite an old wheel in this one. But it still cuts okay. Probably a good idea just to put a finger on the other end to hold the tiles when they break. And um, put the tile into the pincers at this end, push down on the lever. And we have a nice straight cut. Hopefully we'll find that tile fits in nicely. Just move that spacer a little bit. Yep, which that does. The other useful tool is something with a serrated edge, basically a tile spreader, which is a nice big one, pick up from DIY stall. What I'd recommend is spreading from the inside out. The reason being you want this tile adhesive to dry eventually and the only way it's going to dry is if the air from the edges of the tile can actually get in to the tile adhesive so if you spread out from the middle of the tile to the outside edge 
and you know you've always got air channels going into the centre of the tile. So it provides the maximum opportunity for it to, to dry. There we go. That's nicely uh, spread, fairly consistent height. Push that on the wall. Recommend moving it up and down a little bit so that uh, you know that the adhesive has tapped onto the wall nicely. Set up your spacer. So that's the way to tile it. Uh, obviously carry on uh, around the whole room in that uh, procedure. The other thing worth mentioning is uh, the same PVA sealant we use on the bare plaster also used on bare woodwork. So here we've got an inset bath that's been recessed into some 80mm plywood for the sides and the top. Um, needs to take particular care and attention to make sure that no water gets onto the wood. So first of all we'll seal the wood with PVA that allows us to uh, um, glue onto it with the tile adhesive and make sure that the water from the tile adhesive doesn't soak into the wood too much. And uh, the other thing we'll do later is to provide a very firm bond and a very firm and spectacular seal of the wood from any water and moisture that might spill over the bath. And the way we're going to do that is to use uh, some liquid resin sealant which will first of all bond the bath to the wood and stop it moving and secondly provide a great waterproof seal um, uh, to the wood so that if there's any water gets past the grout of the tiles which I'm going to put on top of here later as well there's no chance of the water then penetrating into the wood because if that ever happens the wood will rot, expand, split the tiles which will make the leaks even worse and the whole thing will be ruined. So many times I've seen baths fitted where you've just got a, a wood uh, surface with tiles grouted and fitted on top and the grout is not not being fantastically waterproof, especially with the weight and uh, therefore uh, movement of the bath, um, creating very slight micro cracks around it. The water gets to rots the wood, then all the tiles become loose. Uh, all the times that I put resin seal around it, it's lasted uh, many decades and has had no problem of the tiles becoming loose or the sealant working loose. So that's something I'd recommend. Next job is to show how to fit the tiles uh, around this awkward pipework. Undo the fittings, obviously drain all the water down, move them out of the way, take off the covers, make sure you don't lose the rubber washers. So, then we need to mark the position of where we want the holes in the tile. So let's mark. How long the holes are going to be. Like so. And then we need to mark the height. So then we'll flip it the other way. So mark the height. So our number one is let's see if the other one's going to be the same, which it should be. Yep, just about the same. And then over here, that's the first hole, second hole, oops, Not enough about there. Right, having marked our position of where we want the hole, I'm going to use a uh, masonry drill bit and do lots of holes all the way around and hopefully join them up and knock them out uh, to make the hole. So it goes. Drilled down. Enough. They don't need to be particularly neat or accurate because the cover that goes over the hole and the pipes is pretty large and cover uh, any messiness. Plus, also going to grout around it as well. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is I wouldn't normally drill through from this side of the tile 
as uh, better to drill, drill through from the shiny side of the tile because you'll get uh, a bit of the tile surface uh, chipped off as you drill from the back but again because this is such a, a large area and covers a lot of the imperfections it's not so much of a problem and there's probably a lot of different ways of uh, cutting the hole and neater one will probably be a circular uh, diamond hole cutter but uh, use what you've got there we go You can see around the pipes are also sealed around them with the polymer adhesive, polymer sealant, to get that on without getting the tile adhesive on the threads. So the next cut we've got to make is particularly difficult because we've got to cut a rectangular section out of this piece of tile. Um, cutting these pieces is going to be easy enough with the tile cutting uh, diamond blade but cutting across there is not going to be so easy because we can't get that piece over the guard so what we're going to have to do is try and cut in diagonally so we'll see how that goes. Uh, you could of course use a uh, reciprocating saw with a diamond cutting blade which I've got one in the garage but uh, honest I've been a bit lazy, can't really bother going down to get it, so we'll try and do it with this one, which I think should work out. Let's see. So for this long cut, uh, we've marked both sides by measuring from the roof down to that top tile. So we'll start off in the right position, just keep an eye on it, check as we go, headphones on. Uh, tile and the shower refitted. As you can see the covers on the shower fittings cover up those rough holes that we made and we cut the slots, fitted the tiles around the um, extractor. Uh, just to mention that that extractor is just a grill. The electrical part of the fan is uh, 10 or 20 feet away because obviously you don't want to have any electrical items anywhere near um, wet areas such as a shower. So um, some more tiling to do. Alternative way of um, measuring the tiles of course is also with a tape measure. So we could just run it across to the edge, allow a little bit of a gap for putting some grout in. So 23 centimeters, get up the top, see if it's straight and measure all the way up. In that particular case happens to be vertical. And we very quickly knock off some 23 centimeter wide pieces of tile using the same tape measure. These happen to be dead straight, so all we've got to do is butt our tile against the end of the tile cutter. Then we end up with a uh, straight tile. One good hard press down the line is good enough. That's one. Another point worth mentioning is if you do take the risk and start off with a whole tile either against a wall like I have down here or against the, the bottom, so you start at the bottom with a whole uncut tile, then make sure that the tile, starting tile is fully level by checking with your spirit level. And if you're going to do it up against the wall like I've done there, broke 
one of my rules that I was talking about earlier about really having the um, join against the wall at uh, half or a quarter tile but I previously measured this wall and it was pretty vertical and so I took the risk of uh, butting whole tiles up against it. The other thing worth mentioning is that uh, although here we've got the shower cubicle already fitted if you're fitting a new bathroom, fitting a new shower cubicle it would of course be easier to tile the walls first and fit the shower cubicle later Mainly you wouldn't have to do all this cutting around the edge of the cubicle what I'm proposing to do on the edge rather than use grout which obviously you can uh, crack especially with some very high hairline cracks which will allow water through onto the plasterboard and down the edge I'll actually use the polymer um, sealant for my sealant gun down this rather critical edge and the same the other side probably do the same in the corner as well this type of um, tile cutter is particularly useful when cutting off uh, small slivers of tile even down to something uh, this thick with its additional score and break um, tying um, cutter. There's always the danger that as you break it uh, it won't follow the line and goes off on a perhaps a minor fault in the tile somewhere you don't get a straight line and it's actually just as quick to cut using this wet disc uh, cutter. The machine is particularly useful for cutting awkward shapes as well like uh, slight semicircles uh, such as around the sink you can see over there and that side this little bit because uh, the sink is already fitted obviously it would have been easy to take the whole sink unit out and put the tiles behind the sink um, but it's more effort to do that rather than just cut the tile and then one can fill with a bit of sealer which you have to do anyhow to keep the water at the back which will cover up the join between the sink and the tile so it'll be quite a nice straight line once we finish, put a bit of tape down, put the sealer over the sealant over the top, and you've got a good finish. The next awkward job is fitting these border tiles, which adds a little bit of decoration to the room. Uh, in this case, they're individual glass tiles. A plastic covering over the top has got to be removed, and a thin plastic mesh on the back. The problem is um, they are weight quite a lot because they're glass, really designed for borders uh, around in that sort of position. Uh, with the plastic on, has a little bit of a bend on it because obviously the plastic's bent and shrunk a bit. Really want to remove the plastic before putting it on the wall. Uh, big problem um, putting the border in this direction due to the weight of the individual glass units. The whole thing tends to droop down, these bottom ones tend to bend out, the gap between the individual tiles narrows, and you end up with this edge not lining up with the tile. So, uh, probably a few different ways to get around that, but. I think one of the easiest and one of the best is to pre-prepare this strip as I've done here by putting some tile adhesive on the back first then flip it over peel off the plastic which is a little bit time consuming because it's a little bit messy and then grout it or rather um, use tile adhesive to stick it onto the wall in the position now because it's already got tile grout in between the individual tiles not only is it stiffened it up it's completely flat because it's set on this flat tile and um, therefore the individual tiles don't compress and you don't end up uh, with a pattern going off as it droops down the wall. But one of the other issues with this sort of tile is it can end up lower than the surrounding tiles because a lot of the grout disappears in between the many gaps between the tiles so doing this pre-preparation tends to avoid that. The other thing I've found also allows them to line up better is to double grout it, so grout the tile and put some grout onto the wall as well with a different pattern, I'm going to use a fine pattern this time and I think the reason for this is the tile perhaps is a little bit thinner than the normal tiles so this will probably help it stick a little bit as well. It also helps get the level just about right. So you need to make sure you work it well into the corners as well because what you don't want is these individual tiles to be uneven all over the place. A little bit tricky this one. 
in into the corners there. Oh, we've got tile spacer, that's why. Try that again. There we go, that'll do. And now we can lift it into place. Try not to bend it too much. And now we can fit our tile spaces without worrying about the individual tiles drooping down. So let's just get a spacer in there, clean this one up. Just pop one like that will do. Can remove these spaces later anyhow. That should do quite nicely. There we go. And then the top of our tile is pretty much matching up between the decorating uh, strip and the top of the tile there. We'll get the grout off. Clean up the grout from the edges. In case we don't get round to doing the tiles next to it quickly. And that is the best way of doing those sort of tiles. So at least I found finish off the main grouting later to fill all the gaps nicely. Alright, the next stage is um, tiling around the bath. And first, we're going to resin seal uh, around the bath. So we're going to use this sort of stuff, fiberglass resin with hardener. So plenty of the liquid stuff that I've bought. Uh, I'm going to use up bits of filler that was in the garage that I haven't used all the same sort of stuff. I think that's a wood, concrete, metal filler, car body filler, just to give it a bit of substance to make it go further. Um, I'm going to do quite a thin layer around here so it doesn't raise up the level of the tile too much so it goes over this um, edging piece but the idea of using resin is it effectively uh, glues the bathtub uh, onto the wood and that actually seals the wood from any uh, water penetration as well um, so I need to go around and fill any little holes to make sure that the resin is all not going to drip away uh, there's a little gap around the back, but there's uh, wood underneath, so it'll stop. So I fill that with uh, with resin and filler. Um, around the edge, I've used some uh, polymer sealant um, to be uh, SMX polymer sealant. MS polymer is uh, very very similar. No, not silicon sealant. Uh, polymer sealant, um, well, not is not only very good at sticking to things, but things will stick to it very well as well. So uh, don't use silicon. Um, so I'm going to make it very liquid, pour it all over, put some masking tape or uh, duct tape around the bath to stop getting resin on the bath surface, fix it at about a tile's uh, depth high so you, the resin gets a good firm grip onto the bath and firmly glues and bonds it onto the wood and also the wood is also then glued to the wall and the whole thing sets hard. It's a hard setting resin, so it stops the bath from moving, stops it from creaking as you're getting uh, in and out. Uh, depending on the type of bath you're using, you might want to have a uh, thicker level of uh, resin uh, to give it a bit more strength. So for instance, this bath I put in about three years ago, it's a standard uh, bath tub, uh, has a, a rolled edge, it's normally about that thick. You see here I've chosen to raise up the um, side areas of the bath. Um, primarily at the back so that water then doesn't run off the edge and go to a lower level at the back particularly over this edge and get trapped and um, just make a bit of a mess over time so I've put resin down the sides but also packed it out and um, built it up in layers with bits of old tile to basically uh, pad out the uh, the resin glue that I've used around the edge and I've done it in layers making sure the resin is going around uh, all of the old tiles Raised up the level so it was actually higher than the bath in the final tile. Uh, as you can see, it's higher than the bath, so any water that goes on here will just roll off into the bath. Um, so for a good functional reason of stopping uh, water getting everywhere. Uh, quite a lot of resin used in, in it, so it very firmly bonds the bath 
uh, to the walls and to the wood frame that it's on. So as you get in and out, there's no sort of creaking noises or other noises. Uh, there's no cracks down the edges that I've seen on uh, baths in other houses that have been put in by other people where you just have tiles bonded onto wood and uh, after a few years after it's uh, all gone cracked you take up the tiles and you find the wood is all rotten um, so I always use the, the resin technique and never had any problems with it and you never have any issues with these tiles cracking due to the wood underneath getting wet because it's all sealed in uh, by the resin so uh, that's my favourite technique of putting in baths. So before we could do the bath ceiling, we had to fix the position of the tower rail because this, in this instance it goes uh, down through the uh, that horizontal surface, which meant I had to tile the walls just as an aside. Um, going on to tiling around radiators, um, the best method is to remove the radiator supports and um, say so remove one, leave the radiator supported on one or two of the other supports um, measure where the hole was, drill a hole through the tile, then um, glue um, the tile onto the wall using the tile adhesive. Uh, the hole should then line up and then you can remount the screw, remount the radiator support for it. So it's just a matter of drilling four holes, sorry, three holes in the uh, three tiles affected and is a relatively quick way of um, uh, tiling around the radiator. So no doubt some people would say it'd be better to tile under the bath first but um, there's pros and cons to each technique it certainly would be easier cutting the tiles to uh, tile first and then mount the bath later but the downside and the reason I haven't done it here uh, well there's several reasons actually uh, but the main reason is that I wanted to get a very good seal uh, between the bath and the uh, the wood, the wood substrate uh, in order to stop water getting through uh, if it was on tiles you're always susceptible then to the tiles cracking and moving and the bond between the tiles and the wood is not going to be uh, so great wouldn't be able to resin seal it because all the resin would then all fall off the edge you could probably do a very very light coat I suppose but it wouldn't, I suppose it wouldn't be as good uh, having it resin sealed like this you're effectively gluing the bath to the wood and therefore to the wall the bath is made of the, because it's fiberglass bath, it's made of the same resin material as you're using as the glue. And so they do, the two bond together reasonably well. Um, makes the tile cutting a little bit more uh, difficult later. But uh, it's a small price to pay I think for um, a much, firmly, uh, much more firmly mounted bath.